What is a plan? A plan is a written list of arranged actions necessary to achieve your desired goal. A plan is a written list of arranged actions necessary to achieve your desired goal. In Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 2, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, that means write the plan, and make it plain upon tables that it may run that I read it. Any plan not written down is a wish. It's not a plan. God is saying, do you have a plan? Then put it in writing, document it somewhere. That's what it means. Planning is very laborious, tedious, and meticulous. Some people avoid planning because it's time consuming. Many don't like to plan because it takes, it's very tedious to plan. One good about plan is that it eliminates the wrong people in your life and takes them from wasting your time, takes them off your way. Planning is bringing the future into the present so you can do something about it now. Planning is simply thinking ahead on paper. Thinking what? On paper, on documentation. You are thinking ahead on paper. A wise man said, if you fail to plan, you are planned to fail. And planning is a non-transferable responsibility of anyone who desires true success. If you want to succeed, you can't transfer a plan to somebody else. You have to plan it yourself. So here. An adequate and proper planning is what guarantees the completion of any project. No project can be completed if you don't plan. It's scriptural. Luke chapter 14, 28 to 30. You can't complete any assignment if you don't what? If you don't plan. In Luke 14, 28, for which of you intending to build a tower, seated not down first and counted the cost, where they have sufficient to do what? Finish it. You read verse 29 together, one to go. Saying this man began to build and was not able to what? Finish. You can't finish any project if you don't plan. As simple as school, you think if you don't plan, you won't graduate. Because you will not know when to read and when to play. Even if you graduate, you graduate with very poor grades. Everything has to be with what? Planning. Planning is knowing what should be done. Why it should be done, when it should be done, where it should be done, who should do it, and how it should be done. That's planning. Let me say this to you, people of God. When you plan ahead, it eliminates stress in challenging times of your life. Every time you're under stress, Check well if you plan. When challenges come, the reason why people are under stress is because they know what? Plan. In Proverbs chapter 6, 6 to 8, it says, Go to the earth, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. Is that clear? Which have what? No guide, overseer, or ruler. Provided her meat in the summer. And gathered her food in the harvest. Because of planning, the ants know when to come out and when to go in. Is that clear, sir? Stress is eliminated. Pressure is removed because they take time to plan their own. Now, I've seen people, I've said it over and over, run around when their, their wife may be delivered and they run around and say, I want to pay hospital bill. And they wonder what is wrong with the man. 
There is a woman pregnant, nine months. Nobody delivers in one day. True? There's no one day delivery. There's a woman got pregnant for nine months. The man did not plan how she would deliver. Then on the day of delivery, he said, I'm looking for hospital to be. You now wonder whether it's, it's okay with the senses. I'm under pressure. Hospitals, I should pay the bill. No, it didn't come as an emergency. There's no emergency delivery. It's poor planning. Poor what? Because God gave you nine months notice. True? You have children that you cannot cater for. Is it the devil? You should give bad account to your size. God said multiply, this is only you. <laughs> Why will you have nine children when you are a security man? Some will not go to school. There's no prayer about that. Some will not go. You're a gatekeeper and you have nine children. And he said, I don't know what is happening. I can't even train them. No. No. Your size and the number of children is too much. Even if a policeman taking bribe, will you, will you take bribe every day? You know, do you know that police officers have less children than the junior men? Most senior police officers may have two, three, but the junior men will multiply. <laughs> Most sergeants in barracks, they have four, five, six, seven. I've stayed in barracks before. They have more children than the officers. Because they just, anywhere they go, they just multiply. If your father was a soldier, you would know that. <laughs> the recruits have more children than the officers. <laughs> so the children of them will become armed robbers. So because, because he can't train them. He can't what? He can't use sergeant's salary to train 10 children. There's nothing. He's poor planning. Poor what? Plan. But I, I'm sure you're hearing something to change your life today. In case you're at that level, God will help you and make you to train those children in Jesus' name. <laughs> you know, it's poor planning. In, in this part of the world, your father will have children at old age and expect the first set of children to train his children. No, no, you are not to inherit that. You are already 60, so now reduce. You don't have the kind of money and you are still having children. You now say, my first children, I've sent them to school. They will not inherit. So you find out that the man is giving children as a liability to his first set of children. Poor planning. Poor what? He says, see a man diligent in his business. Proverbs 22, verse 29. It says, See it a man what? It shall stand before kings, shall not stand before mean men. When you plan and prepare well, it will determine the quality of your performance. It says, See it a man who plans well, he will be great. He will be what? You will be great in Jesus' name. Amen. Shout a better amen. amen. In Proverbs 21, verse 5. The King James said, the toss of the diligent tend only to plenteousness, but of everyone that is hasty, only to want. But I want to read the New Living Translation. Look at the New Living Translation. It said, good planning and hard work lead to prosperity. Did you hear that? Lead to what? So if you want to prosper, you have to plan well and then work well. Is that clear, sir? God is a master planner. If you see the Almighty God. God did not say, I'm the almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth. I can do all things. He planned. If you look at Genesis chapter 1, you can see planning. Before he created the fishes, he made sure there was water. Is that clear? He didn't put, there was no chaos. There was no confusion. Before the animals came, he planned there was bush. Before man came, he planned the garden. You can see order. You can see what? You can see order. Anywhere you see disorder, there's poor planning. Anywhere people run up and down, even in the family, as for what? Plan. God took time to plan. To do what? To plan. He said, before I bring the fishes, water was there. Before wedding, there's no prayer. You will know how much you have to plan your wedding. True? That's planning. We have 20,000. So boy, reception, we know how we do it. And it's not compulsory. It's not what? They didn't say, that shall wear a special gown. Whatever your size can buy. My wedding suit was 2,000 naira. I'm wearing 2,000 naira suit now. And nobody, okay, if you want to know how very fun it is, the last wedding I attended, remember the suit they wore. You, you can't remember. So, why kill yourself? Plan according to your size. According to your what? But people will not plan. This is it. I was going to buy one wedding ring. 
Only the ring has flipped the whole money. <laughs> Calm down. Plan according to your size. Shout hallelujah. In Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Let's read together the reverse of that uh, version. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future. God himself said, I have plans for you. So God plans. God does what? Let me say this to you. Prayer is not a substitute for planning. Neither is planning a substitute for prayer. There's a place for prayer. There's a place for what? You cannot live in a house you can't afford to pay. That's poor planning. That's poor what? Don't use faith and prayer to cover it. You know your income, so go and live in a house of your size. So I hear. Hmm? If you are living in a house you can't pay, it's poor what? It's poor planning. It's not faith. Don't say, I'm believing God. You have poor planning. You know your income, so go for your size. Go for what? Your size. There's no point believing and having, I'm having faith. If you have faith, then exercise it. Don't worry people. Exercise your faith. Exercise your what? Every time you worry people, you are not exercising faith. For faith looks up to God, not up to man. Any faith that looks up to man is no more faith. Don't call it faith again. Call it begging. Don't use ties. Just say, I'm exercising faith. Just say, I, 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 please, can I beg you? Don't say, I believe God, that God will use you. God will not use you. It's not the Bible. God does not say, that I shall beg people. Just say, I can beg you, please. I want to beg you. Don't say, I believe God. God will bless you. Don't quote scriptures. At that point, just say, I want to beg you. Please find me something. A begging is begging. Don't tell his faith. It's not faith. That's no more faith. That's what? And don't share testimony that you had favor. You didn't have favor. You begged. It's not here. But Christians will say, God, I had favor. No favor. That's not favor. That's begging. Begging is no more favor. Begging is lobbying. You know, people just turn things upside down. They say, God gave me favor. God did not give you favor. You beg for it. And then don't share testimony about it. Just say that. I, you know, when I begged, they gave me. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. That's nothing wrong. Just say, when I begged, they did what? And it's better. Don't say, God gave me favor. God did not give you any favor at all. Jesus planned our future. Jesus planned what? Read your Bible. He said, I go to prepare a place in John 14 verse 2. You can see planning. Even the mansions in heaven are planned for. He said, in my father's house are many what? And if you are not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place what? For you. In my father's house, there are many what? Do you know the birth, the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ before the foundation of the world, God planned it. That is even before Jesus was born, God planned that. He said, thou was slain before the foundation of the earth. So before even Jesus came, God planned it. John, he said, I have planned that you would not. In Revelation 13 verse 8, he said, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the earth. So even before Jesus died, God planned it. Are you getting me? He planned the future before he came. May you plan your life. Amen. Noah, God told him to build the ark, but he planned the building. He took time to plan how the ark would be built. Solomon planned the building of the temple. Is that clear? Moses planned how he would put the tabernacle. Please plan your life. Don't live your life anyhow. It's not wisdom. It's not what? Wisdom. Plan everything about your life. Plan everything about your family. Plan everything about your finances. Plan everything about even your work. Plan it. Even your work, do what? If you don't plan, hear this. Your finances, you will soon borrow. I can tell you. If you don't plan your what? If you don't plan your finance, you will borrow. Plan your spendings. Plan your what? Because it is those who plan well that manage well. High life without planning leads to borrowing. And living above your income enslaves you. In Proverbs 22 verse 7, the rich led over the poor and the borrower is a servant to the what? Lender. Discipline yourself. Now, one problem with borrowing is that you will pay it back. <laughs> One problem with what? Is that you pay it back. It's not free. 
That's why they call you borrow. That's the problem borrowing has. Borrowing is that you will pay it. You will pay it back. Borrowing is emptying your future to satisfy yourself of today. When you borrow, you are emptying your harvest of tomorrow to satisfy yourself today. That's borrowing. The harvest that will come, you are, you are already taking it ahead of time. That's borrowing. Borrowing is emptying your, your future to satisfy yourself today. That's why I don't borrow. It's not a sin. I don't borrow. I will never borrow till Jesus comes. Is it a sin? No. It's a borrow, not a few. You can quote that scripture. But I saw owe oh, no man. I took a decision in 1997 never to owe. And I will never owe till my time on earth is over. He says, is he a sin? No. But I don't want anybody to knock at my door that I'm owing you. Because owing can make you die quick. Some people are mad on the street. They're not really mad. They, do you know, there's a level of debt you owe, you'll be moving and you forget yourself. Motor blow on, pain, 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 pain. You will remember the debt you're owing, you'll be absent-minded. You see some people do like this. They are calculating 25,000. Hey, where will I pay? 20. Your wife will wake you. My husband, are you dreaming? It's not dream. It's a debt. 25,000 minus 18,000. My salary is 18,000. I'm owing 25,000. You, you won't know why your hand will be doing like this in the dream. <laughs> your wife will not wake you. My husband, what are you calculating? My wife, I failed mathematics, but this one I'm calculating it. <laughs> Please avoid, live your size, plan your life. Are you hearing me now? Avoid covetousness. Avoid what? Most of we borrow because of covetousness. Is it beware of what? Covetousness. Luke 12, verse 15. Be content whatever you have. Say here. First Timothy 6 6. There's no substitute for what? Planning. There's no substitute for planning. Don't give your life a magical approach, give it a logical approach. Lack of planning creates room for waste. It draws people into debt. It generates pressure and tension. When you lack planning, you come under pressure and what? Tension. Emptiness and lack sets in. Have value for planning. So just have value for planning. Let me say this to you. Stop keeping company with non-planners. People who have no purpose for living. People without a dream and goal, they will drain you. When you are not planner, not planners have this negative mentality to shock you that what they have is never enough. When you want to know a non planner, they say what they have is what? It's never enough. What you have is always enough if you can think well. Planning is using what you have to get what you want. Planning is using what you have to get what you want. People who do not plan lack value of time. They are constantly looking for who to blame for their failure. Successful planners are time investors. And let me say this before I take one point. Stop procrastinating. Don't say I'll plan tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. Successful will do for today what others think of doing tomorrow. Somebody walking with me in the office, I was talking to him, he says, I'll do it tomorrow. I said, what of now? Why don't you do it now? Why tomorrow? The major reason why you have backlog of work for many is tomorrow. That tomorrow is the yesterday of today. Tomorrow. Anything you want to do, do it. A planner, now, procrastination will keep you on the zone of mediocrity. If you want to be a mediocre, keep procrastinating. Keep what? No plan how you will live your life. Just say next year. Next year. Next year. Next year. I'll marry. Next year. I think I'll get you younger. Next year. Next year. My friend, plan your life. Even if you reduce your age. Don't you know your age? <laughs> next year. Plan your life. Next what? It's not only women. It's both men and women. There are men who don't plan their life. It's getting old. You see, doing kidding boyo. I mean, plan your life now. You already matured. You are still doing boyo. 
Plan your life. Have you seen any, somebody beggar, have you seen any beggar in this world? They say, this man is very handsome. Once you're a beggar, you're not handsome. So since you are, <laughs> since you are begging as a young man, calm down and plan your life. Both men and women. Young lady to plan. Plan your life. Ask yourself, even if you reduce your age, is, it, is this my age? I don't I know my age. I think you know that if I reduce my age, some of you, if I tell you I'm 52, you agree. If I, many people reduce their age. I know many will reduce their age. You know, you look at me now. If I say I'm 52, wouldn't you agree? What looks, makes me look since you're going to 59? I'm not, if I say I'm 52, you agree. Most people, reduce, most people say I'm older than them. I look at them, I say you. I will pass you. <laughs> now, but I know my true age. I know my what? I didn't reduce my age. This is my true age. Whatever age I'm showing you, it's my true age. But I know people are older than me who are my mates. <laughs> Some of you my junior. <laughs> now, even if you reduce your age, don't you know your true age? So plan your life. That's why you see Nigerian footballers, most of them, because they reduce, reduce to a point. When they say they are 32, they already, they can't run. <laughs> but Ronaldo is still running at 37. But they, 32, they can't run because that's not the true age. The man is already in his 40s. There was an Nigerian footballer, I won't call his name. They were twins. From his name, you know that he was a twin. From the, they have a way they call their name. I won't call his name. Now, his own twin brother was already 42 when he was 31. <laughs> <laughs> so I wonder how they were twins. <laughs> so he retired early. At 31, 32, he retired. Because there was no way to run. Let me take only one point. Tools for effective planning. But if you want to plan, there are tools. There are what? Tools for effective planning. Can I, can I play football now? No anointing in this world can make me play football. It's not a prayer point. It's not a word. If you put me on the field, put ambulance. <laughs> Just imagine me to say, now, nah, I, I know I'm anointed. Father, I'm going to play professional <laughs> You put ambulance. You put what? You, as I'm going for the training, he said, Pastor, that's an ambulance. <laughs> because there's no way, no, no miracle, no miracle in this world can make me play professional what? At this age. Plan your life. Oh. Don't use prayer to cover it. He said, just imagine, just imagine me now wear a boot. So I'm going, <laughs> I told me novelty match, oh, real football. So I know God can do. Stop quoting scriptures upside down. I know my God can do all this. He make it the, 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 the old man to be youthful. So <laughs> and now, and now enter, enter field with small, small boys. <laughs> but then they triple you. <laughs> the ambulance will carry you. After 30 minutes, they say, I beg, catch this man. No. <laughs> Let him not die on the field. <laughs> my friend, plan your life. Don't use prayer to cover some nonsense. The artist prayer will do. The artist prayer will not. There is no prayer in this world. Let all the I not tell me hold their hands. Say David, be here. Now we pray for you to be young. No way. <laughs> I can't play football at this age. So plan your life. For. Number one. <laughs> Number one tool for effective planning is reasoning. Is what? Reasoning. What is it? In Isaiah chapter one verse eighteen, say, "Come, let us reason together." Say the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Do not be red as crimson, they shall be as wool. If you be willing to be, they shall be what? The good of the land. Reason is a principal tool for effective planning. If you read the Bible, many times we say God will do it. No, no, no. Sit down and reason. Do you know if you read Acts of the Apostle chapter 6, 1 to 7, you will discover something in the Bible. There was a problem in the early church where Peter, James, and John, you know the woman, the Grisha woman, the Hebrew woman. How many of you know the story? There was a moment in the church. But there was something the apostles said. And in those days, when the number of disciples were multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grishans against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily work. Listen then the twelve called the multitude of disciples unto them and said, It is not reason, take note, it is not what? That we should leave the word of God and serve what? 
They said it is not reason. That means they said not the Holy Ghost. Listen, the Holy Ghost did not say so. They said no, 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 no. This is not good. We are leaving the main thing God called us to do and we are focusing on the minor things. It was from reasoning it metamorphosed to say, hey, let some people be appointed. Dickens were appointed by reason, not by Holy Spirit. The first time Dickens were appointed in the church was through what? Reason. Not, God said, let your, not everything you pray. Okay, look at my life. Am I going forward? You are reasoning. What am I doing with this? I'm already getting old. This thing I'm doing, is it right? You, you are reasoning or no prayer? No what? Then you begin to plan your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? It was not the Holy Spirit that said it. It was the reason that they evolved into planning. Now, the prodigal son, for instance, was very poor. Was it what? The Bible said, and he said to himself, what am I doing here? Say so reason. In Luke 15, 17, and 18. He said, he came to himself. He was reasoning. It was what? He said, what am I doing in my life here? And when he came to himself, he said, how many higher servants of my fathers have bread enough to spare? And I perish with what? I will arise and go to my father. And reasoning brought him out of poverty and suffering. And reasoning is of the mind. It's of what? And we have the mind of Christ. So you sit down with your mind and begin to rack it and say, why am I doing, what is happening to me? Why is my business not going forward? Why is my life not going forward? It is, why is my husband fighting me every day? You reason, not everything you pray. Pray, there's a demon. No demon is wanting the husband and wife. Poor reason. Poor what? May you reason well. Amen. You know, in this part of the world, we have this Bessada syndrome. You know, that man at the pool in John chapter 5 was there for 38 years. For how many years? This man was at the pool waiting to be healed for 38 years. And you know his problem? You know his major problem? He made a statement in verse 7. Look at that was his problem. And the important man answered him. When Jesus asked him, do you want to be more home? Sir, I have no man. Take now another word. I have no man when the water is what? He said, I don't have anybody. Okay, if he had no man, who was giving him food? That was not true. Because it was not, it was important. So someone was giving him food. And what stops him from putting his leg permanently in the water? <laughs> so anytime the angel comes, he me. That is the problem of many people. I, I wouldn't have been like this if somebody was there to help you. Are you, are you help yourself. I wish somebody was there. I won't be like this. <laughs> da, help yourself. Now, nobody is there. Now, you are there. You know why I'm suffering like this? You got nobody want to help me. My friend, you want to plan your life. If nobody is to help you, you will help yourself. But you know when you don't plan, you look for who to blame. With, and that's the syndrome here in this part of the world. Always... They are blaming government. They are blaming pastors. They are blaming brothers. They are blaming sisters. Wife will blame husband. Husband will blame wife. I would have prospered enough for my wife. So God will make this mistake to be your wife. I would have prospered enough for this man I married. Okay, the man you have married him is not a problem. Plan your life. You are married to a woman. She's not a concern. Plan your life. You are a Nigerian. There is no way you can go out of Nigeria now. Plan your life. You are a Ghanaian. Stop blaming Ghanaian government. Plan your life. You're already born in Ghana. There's no way now you can change it. Plan your life. We are always looking for no man to help me. This is called no man help me syndrome. No man to help me. They have acquired immune what? This was no man to help me syndrome. No man to what? Why do you call it? No man to help me. What is it? You know they have... Immune, immune, acquired, whatever. HIV is called acquired immune. So this one is what? How do you put it? No, N, M, N, no, man, to M, N, M, T, H, what? S, uh, uh, syndrome. My friend, calm down. That all is poor planning. Poor what? There's always what to do if you plan well. Hello. Are you hearing me? Hey, 
plan well. Just sit down, ask yourself questions. Listen your way out of that challenge. Are you getting what I'm saying? Just sit down and reason. What am I doing like this? Why is my life like this? Why should I continue like this? How many years do I have on earth? You already know, no prayer. I'm already in my 40s. Is that how I will live my life? I won't I plan well? Even if I'm doing boyo boyo 48. <sighs> won't I talk to myself? Ah, it's enough now. No prayer. You get up. I say, no, enough. I begin to put things in right. Anytime you wake up in the morning, I do it every day. Before you wake up the following day, write all the things you will do the previous day. The, by the following day, you recover many things. Any day you don't write out your plans, watch that day to be a wasted day. You'll be running around busy, but you will not be effective. Anytime you want to be effective the following day, don't write it in the day. Write it a day before. Morning, I'll get up so time to read my Bible. So time I will pray. So time I will make telephone calls. So time I'll read, I'll be in the office. So time I'll be in my business. So time I will close. So, now, the reason why people bomb into us, disorganize us, is because of poor planning. They too don't have plan. We too don't have plan. So there's confusion everywhere. When a poor planner meets another poor planner, stop blaming people for your life. Go and plan your life. Will you plan well? How many will plan well? But you are going to pray. He said that lack wisdom, let him ask. James 1.5. Either act with the letting worth of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not and it shall be given. You ask God for wisdom to become an effective planner. Lord, I ask you for what? Wisdom to become an effective planner. Go ahead and pray that prayer in the name of Jesus. Ask God for wisdom to become an effective planner. Oh, go ahead and talk to God in the name of Jesus. Ask for the wisdom of God to become an effective planner. Pray for wisdom to become an effective planner. In Jesus' mighty name. 